Okay, starting recording. So today is uh, Tuesday, May the 7th, 2 p.m., a regular OSC dev team meeting. So a few items on the agenda. The main one for me is uh, the open source microfactory bootcamp. Um, typing that in. No, sorry, not boot. We're gonna we're calling it STEM camp because it's more much focused more focused on educating. So let me let me bring you up to speed on that. So essentially, the this is gonna be uh, Ju uh, July, early July, but in specifically uh, June 29th through the <coughs> through July the seventh. So it's a nine day total, and we're doing it a little different than all other times. So basically. <coughs> Focusing on not, not like typically we say, okay, we're gonna just build this to a pre-designed way. Uh, what we prepare for the workshop, we're gonna have it let the people have much more say in what, what they um, they get taught. Well, what they actually build. And we'll have on hand the, the materials for building a lot of crazy things. And, and we focus it around the open source microfactory. So uh, essentially, uh, starting with 3D printers, but then using those three printers to do some real useful prototyping and other builds and I'll just point you to the current uh, let's see uh, the last time called summer school 2019 if you go to the summer school uh, 2019 let me share let me share the video first of all uh, so Mm. Sharing the sharing video. Also, uh, so it's micro the boot camp it's called, but it's really the stem camp. Okay, so uh, general schedule. So we'll start with the first four days. Everything around the three D printer. All that including building the three D printers, and then using those printers and skills. Like we're gonna spend a lot of time on teaching design principles for open source machine. So, um, let me go to my Google Drive and I'll point you to that. Or better yet, let's go to recent wiki changes. So you can you can all follow this. Recent wiki changes, just go to page called uh source micro factory stem camp and click on the working Google Doc. So in it one one is the first four days is is uh, focusing on teaching and then people select products and then the second five days. Now to prepare people for the second five days it's focuses design techniques and build techniques so so 18 <laughs> sessions throughout the nine days 18 sessions all, to, all together 18 hours <coughs> on how to design things so a lot of a lot of crazy topics such as um frames universal axis step promoters controllers uh, drive system g code gear downs street printer extruder design shaft and bearings couplers Pulleys, belt screws, force and torque calculations, structural calculations, thermal calculations, circuits, hydraulics 101, heater elements, CNC machine design. Proper. So, covering just a wide range of topics, but focusing around the universal axis is a way to build a lot of different CNC machines. Start with a 3D printer, which will get hands on. People can uh, buy the kit to take home with them as part of that. But the last four or five days, take a look at what we've got in plan. So we'll, we'll teach a lot, um, both the theory and the practice in the shop, like we use all the tools, including welders, and torches, and drills, and everything else. B um, so you can take a look at the tentative schedule there. But then, then um, what do we do with it? We get all this all this uh, teaching, but the last five people select, probably break up into three or four groups, probably eight people or so each, and just look at this. Look at the things we're gonna do. So, would we have options? You can select all or none of these, or maybe people want to suggest other things. But we're gonna have materials and supplies, everything on hand to do uh, two two crazy things. Um, so, have you do CNC and metal? So we'll take the limit of the universal axis, which we'll now use two inch or fifty millimeter rods, make a huge version of the. The same thing as you see pretty much on the 3D printer, except the parts are just huge and able to produce about 200 uh, um, pounds of force with 10 mile accuracy. So this is when you fatten things up, but several, like a lot of drive belts actually use three 50mm YGT2 belts, 
and the numbers come out to 100 pounds of drive force and we have dual axes so we can get 100 pounds per axis of like two moving force so that's some serious stuff now we will have frames we can build build the frames web materials for that we'll we'll teach basic welding we'll uh build crazy things for example if you do the full cnc mill that will be six axes total uh so i mean i'll be able like pretty much everybody would have to get in on that if we wanted to do that but we have five days to do it so that's good okay so that's that's gonna be the first time ever we do the huge version of cnc mill that's actually getting ready for things like milling engine parts and things like that just just much bigger than we've ever done before about uh, about 40 times more force than a uh, 3d printer that we're currently using that's that's what the numbers work out to uh that's a i think that's pretty exciting if you choose to do that that'll be fun second metal printer it's a metal printer we'll make a uh, by two foot frame one inch universal axis so the larger the much stiffer one inch solid shafts just hang a big welder head on that and hit the trigger button so uh, you have to protect the sides from being uh, from spatter and you have to make sure that what else i mean you're holding the, the torch strong enough and with one inch universal axis we should be able to do that uh, we're going to have the option to do CNC torch, so basically mounting a torch to a large by two foot platform using one inch universal axis. So if we can build the frames and universal axes, we can hang all the tools on them. It may be different which do different things, but we will have the opportunity to do CNC torch. So basically the XYZ drive and using a machine torch. We have several, a couple at least uh, machine torch handles. Uh, and that it means you're just basically designing a tool mount to mount that on universal axis. So those are three kind of big crazy projects that we can do. And then uh, after that is kind of get into the smaller scale open source product development, the cordless drill where we do a 3D print body, we can use stuck motor, possibly do uh, our own. Uh, actually, William Neal, he's going to co instruct, so it's going to be myself, William Neal, Katrina. We're going to be three of us as instructors, but he has built a open source um, Hallback Array motor that's electronically controlled, so we're going to bring that skill to the table uh, so we can possibly make a smaller version of a uh, motor for cordless drill, probably just get it, get it off the shelf. So battery packs, motors, chucks, um, we'll make all of that design it in FICAT, and uh, if a team wants to dedicate that uh, work on that for five days. We can we can get a first prototype of a working drill. Which, by the way, is intended for a later, uh, much bigger incentive challenge that we're playing for next year, which is about building a professional grade 3D printed cordless drill. So this is kind of like the initial groundwork for uh, prototyping on that. Motors gear dads will play a lot with that. We talked about the herringbone gears, the planetary gears. But they are powerful and can do a lot of stuff. So if you click on those links. You can see the simple planetary gear downs are the splitting kind of planetary gear downs, which, which if they are printed in, in semi-flexible flexible materials like TDU, they're not going to wear out. So you can oversize them. If we build a large 3D printer, which we plan on with the Super Volcano model, which deposits 20 pounds of or 10 kilos of um, plastic per day. We took, you can talk about building large things, large gear downs that actually have significant torque, enough to drive things like the precious plastic shredder off a tiny Nemocentin motor. So crazy stuff like that. Doable. The tricks there are to, okay, if you want them not to wear out, you might want to use things like the plastic gear thing as the printing materials. So have all the capacity doing the workshop. So just a uh, good old time of, of doing this. So that's kind of the initial, well, not the initial, I mean, aiming, I definitely got to publish this today. That leaves us seven weeks and three days if we publish today for people to sign up for the workshop. We aim to have about 24 people and frame it more as the people, the participants, they decide how what they want to do with we'll the full workshop available, stuck metal, even hydraulic motors. People want to mount, for example, a hydraulic spindle on the heavy duty CNC mill. Uh, we'll have an electric power cube available for powering that. Um, so we have a lot of different options, basically opening up the, the whole tooling of the shop, including welders and torches, uh, to, for use to, to build from frames to CNC drive systems to 
RAM, universal controllers, large, small separate motors, gear downs, DIY uh, motors, we 3 print as well as a little bit of uh, etching of circuits and like I mentioned last time, a little bit of 3D printed circuits that uh, can be made ready using 3D printing and, and standard components. A little bit of etching by William, he's gonna be that part, we'll use uh, the tone method to make simple circuits, probably do something like a charger for the cordless, cordless drill. We can do that little circuit, that's pretty simple. Um, but we'll have the options to do heavy duty mechanical work, electronics work, some hydraulics, some welding, just a mix, a, a job mix of just about anything, which I think is quite unique because if you go to STEM camp, you kind of get you get to play play with Lego Mindstorms. Here we're talking about real practical applications for things that can make real economic products. So uh, I feel really good about that. And uh, look forward to this. It's going to be end of June, uh, first week of July. That's it for me. So that's, I've been working on that and also actually um, <clears throat> one one more concept. So during this, uh, just to bring up to, let's see, do we have Abe? No, we don't have Abe, but, but a simple version of a 3D printer and also showcasing the power of the universal axis. What about doing a simple 3D printer that's built like if you Google printer bot? which is essentially a moving bed with really no frame. It's just the, the Z-axis, not X-axis connected to that. Just uh, That's Google printer bot. Um, and I didn't even think about this uh, because it's not really performance, but it's a thing where it's like you don't have a frame. You just, this thing, you have a moving bed. You've got a Z-axis and, and an X-axis. So it's, but what about our universal axis? We can just mount the, the Z-axis straight up and mount another axis on that, and for a small, like, you know, 4 by 5 inch little print bed, hey, that's perfectly fine. And the bill of materials on that is, it's about $200. So, uh, we'll offer both the super simple as an experiment, pl plus the, the larger, well, the standard 8 inch D3D with the professional grade uh, Titan Aero extruder and, and heated bed, in fact, the insulated beds, island tip for drivers, all that, the hydrophone stuff, PI surface for the build plate. Uh, we'll offer that for 800 bucks. This one for like 250 bucks is the kit, because that one is much more expensive, more expensive parts here. It's like the basic strip out of it. Still would work, uh, and it could be a bootstrap machine for simple experimentation, and the price ticket is in the bat. Like if you see here, Probot Sil Pro is like 600 bucks. Uh, for us, we can do um, about 250 for a kit uh, on a simple D3 axis based uh, small version. So, I said you thought actually that last night, and I never really thought about this because it's like, okay, well, uh, I, first of all, the moving bed idea, it's like you can't print tall things because the bed will shake your prints off. You can't go fast. But for a bootstrap machine, hey, perfectly accessible. Uh, especially if we frame it as, okay, he's a kid of simple parts and you completely build yourself, including uh, getting the software to run on, you have a little LCD screen. We'll still include the LCD screen on this um, to make it fun and you don't need your computer on that. But something very simple that you can really feel proud, like you built it all yourself as a simpler option than the full 3D kit that we offer already. Okay, so that's that's it for me. Uh, let's see more. So today I'm going to publish this. So I gotta, you know, do this. Get in another this meeting. I want to publish. It, so I don't spend too late tonight publishing this event because um, it's almost ready. Almost ready to be published. Just gotta get it on the website and everything else. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, slide number three on me. So this is actually the new um, the control panel. So this is three printed. Oh, I printed actually bent in, in half. You see the perforation, perforation line down the middle. Uh, but it used to 90 degrees. You take a heat gun to it and it bends right down to a flat shape. And this mounts all the electrical components, including all the through holes for wires, little wire box in the box on the part of this. Uh, it's got a little wire lock here. It's got it basically sla snaps into frame, so no more zip times to frame. It has these rails on the side, like you see this. Here, this pretty much snaps around the, the third metal frame, and this bottom patcher here that sits on the, the bottom piece of frame, so it's essentially held, snap in to the existing uh, D3D frame.
I think that's cool because I know that at least some sometimes it was really hard when you have all the electronic components on the control panel to even get the zip ties underneath it because you kind of got to reach underneath to uh, to the frame and you know it take you, you know, 10 minutes 20 minutes sometimes just to put the zip ties and if you're not lucky it's things are not aligning I hear you just snap it in in a, in a second or two a couple of seconds and you're done so much more modularity this can only be built by itself it's 3d printed so it's uh, right, right now at its stand it's about 11 inches across and it did that by bending it in uh, bending it at 90 degrees along the perforation and then uh, that could be printed on an inch bed so I think that's a, that is a nice success with all holes pre-located so this is this is fully designed well since I'm so proud of this let me go to the actual wiki to show you the CAD design but the CAD design looks sweet it's um so 3d printed control panel take a look at that so no actually it will be under d3db 1904 uh, the latest cat is there, so but it's fully, it's full catted up. Um, so we got this control panel looks like this. Um, LCD screen. There's going to be the ramps above that with cooling because now we're going to use the sun and tap drivers. There's going to be a small power supply. There's a little wire box behind the ramps so that sh we, we tidy up all the wires. There's a soft tape relay, and including a GFCI circuit since it's going to have a 120 volt bed. So we're going to shockproof this uh, as i think i mentioned last last time so it's safety also a place to plug in if you want to plug in a computer you can plug it into the the control panel if you can or something like that if you want to charge your phone there you go uh, so that's it um that's all i have for now uh so with that said uh talking about the well let's let's get the jennifer but jennifer i'm going to preface this so you're you're going to come to the to the event and um uh how's that going jennifer did you get tickets or are you planning on doing that or yeah, trying tickets to 21st I'm, I'm definitely fine i'm coming can you hear me yeah we can hear you oh. yeah so we'll cover some more details back you wanted to ask it since we're gonna have um people coming in from the airport it's always kind of a pain pain to try have people travel but i was gonna ask you if, you, if you'd be willing to um, like when you arrive, you can make the airport run. What we're going to tell people is, okay, arrive so we can have one van or something like that at like p.m. that that uh, Friday night. I guess that makes it because Saturday, Sunday was the first two days. So Friday night, uh, people arrive. We we tell people to arrive so that we take like one van. Uh, so you have to take multiple trips. It's an hour away to the airport. So hopefully, we can pick everybody up at like 8 p.m. The people who are in driving and people who are flying in. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, Jen, you could be able to, because because if you're gonna be preparing the food stuff, um, uh, ideally you would get you, you know, get a van rental or such, and then you can possibly do that. Would you think you'd be able to do that, or or are you willing to do that? I don't have a problem doing that. I still get my Washington driver's license. Ah. But that's two months away, so I should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd need that. Otherwise, someone would have to drive yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's on my short list. To do anyway, it's not a big deal. I just have to take the test. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, anything else, Jen, on your side? think so. I followed up on emails, haven't heard back from anybody yet. We've got a couple more people that have emailed about um, interest in volunteering, but we'll see how that goes. And um, I haven't had a chance to download, so I need to download stuff. I need to do the free categories that we're checking out, right? There's a library in the Okay. Yeah, so I, I have my laptop at work over the weekend, and yeah. I just I just retrieved it. So I've been out of work on that today, yeah. but I don't have any, I don't have any um, job hours for the rest of the week, so I can work on the full frontal Saturday. That would be great, because uh, 
ideally if you're here and we're doing that we'll be teaching people free cat and how to download our part libraries and actually work and you know, massaging our files around and modifying them so we'll, t we'll teach the basic workflow ideally you could help us too if you're up to speed on it because we'll have to trade it myself and William uh, we know free cat or catcher you actually got to learn it a bit more um, but we won't have uh, ideas that we get 24 people, so like an 8 to 1 student teacher ratio, so that we make the whole school. This is we're going to school people. So, so right, yeah, ideally, yeah. Jeff, if you, if you get up to speed on it, you can help others learn the workflow because it's going to be critical that we do that, or at least we're going to get better results the more people know. And I'm actually looking at getting some, some laptops so that I know it's always like, even if we have the OSC Linux, a lot of times people just can't figure out how to get their boot menu and things like that to, to run the OSC Linux. So we'll probably prepare, uh, get, get a few, like maybe six laptops or so that we can uh, lend to people for those who haven't downloaded uh, FreeCAD. Because I know it's been an issue before that there's always somebody who just can't do the free CAD on their own because they can't even boot up the OS Linux. Uh, even though that's all that. Even though we tell people to like, okay, make sure you do that beforehand. I'm going to learn free CAD, but not a lot of people are doing that. Uh, yeah, they don't. Um, so, I go to a lot of uh, coding classes in town here, and a few people have everything downloaded ahead of time. It's kind of a time consumer. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we might have to address that uh, a little better this time around. Okay. Well, I've, I've downloaded it many times, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that, that would be good if you can, you know, go through. I'd say go through the thing that's called the OSC. There's a, the th third video on the Freak 101 page. It goes through the, so it's to the super fast pace to go through all the, all the different features. There's a third video that kind of just goes, okay, here's the sketcher. Uh, here's how you create three objects, and here's how you modify them. And with that kind of basic workflow, uh, you can get a lot, just about anything that we do right now, I'm done. So that'll be the the place to go. The third video. I can't. I don't know why my wiki's not booting up here. Free cab 101. Yeah, you cut out of a little bit there. Your connection seems a little weak there, but anyway, there. <laughs> On the FreeCAD 101 page, there's the first two fast paced videos. The third video is the general OSC standard workflow. We're going to try to get as many people collaborating, uploading files to the wiki as possible. So now we're going to have our one gig internet lines for which we need to trench to the workshop and to the main residence place. We're going to need to extend some wire uh, optical lines which is going to be a treat. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks. So that uh, William is going to come here and uh, to prepare for the workshop. But yeah, we got a we're gonna have fast internet, so we should have shouldn't problems accessing the wiki, which will be the first time in history where people can actually um, you know work effectively on uh, on uh, on a wiki or uh, online. All of that, including uh, being in the still world. Um, remote participants so yeah that's good um anyway let's continue here so john do you have an update yeah got it um so i got some uh, programming done on the uh, mes and i select a mm -hmm. uh, website um yeah and then i was selecting uh open cart then the day uh some nice work it was like a really great uh free open source Website to let people place their, um, you know, just anyone who wants to be a distributed partner can use that. And uh, so, yeah, it's basically designed for the modules um, for any ass to take orders from the cart and uh, start kicking off printing. So, you know, I got that up, still working on that file design, uh, you know, the XML, the format of uh, our description language just has 
which part there's kind of like a tree structure going down to um you know, like this like you know here's the universal axis is the parts that goes into that so people can just uh, trace it back from the beginning um you can just find an order they can use that part file kick off all the printers and everything else produce the parts in the digital factory so um you can uh all road up hold up all right okay. yep let's see that yeah yeah it's just my beginning stuff here yeah i mean it's just uh so i'm looking at uh you know mexican several uh so that's it i mean mes just the ground works being laid and uh the organization um on the mes site that's that language again mm -hmm. um and the uh I have a uh, critical path and project planning stuff up on the NES page. I'll use one of your uh, critical path templates for that to kind of track the project. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we're just going to have like, little scripts like that that are just going to take care of each part, kind of fill in the guts to start to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really just going to be SQL and just basic scripts. We'll take the order, going to process it and start up something. So yeah, next is uh, D3 for um, so, you know, I um, just put that guy up and started to play around a little bit more when I caught a chance. I had tons of wiring issues. I made uh, my own wiring harnesses uh, using grid connectors. And uh, plenty of those fail. It was kind of frustrating to trace those out as uh, they were failing when they were inserted, but they weren't failing electrically. I but, you know, couldn't kind of do each other with my mold in here. Um, all sorts of issues. I my steppers, finally my connectors got gone, then I did my head stops. Then one nineteen command tries to hey who's energized, but uh it looks like the right performer has a Y max, <laughs> an X mid, and a uh, Z mid. But of course the Z mid I still had an issue with uh, the um, inductive sensor that it's draining a lot of power and causing the screen to dead for some reason. And uh I'm not sure I have a Y max, so I'm looking at the Marlin firmware to kinda eliminate that. So mm -hmm issues here and there and try to document it and i'm also looking at the 3d printer manual to see if i can make it easier for somebody because i mean it's really easy to get there but like whatever yeah i'm just trying to mash it all out but yeah so i can get something going yeah excellent sounds good so it looks like you're making progress there mm -hmm. excellent okay um, well, the last thing is that for those uh, simple printers, you can make a real easy Delta printer with three universal axes. Also, consider that. Um, how do you do the, the, the shot? If it's complex in the joints and all that, like how do you have to kind of yeah. Get joints? Yeah, that's the thing. Like that's the only thing really there. It's just the ball shots. How you do that? Yeah. Uh, but otherwise. Maybe full thing about yeah, the yeah. But I still see if I get out there at some point to you know see what's going on, learn a bit and uh, you know, get once I get the basic stuff on the ES and I head over there and get um, your uh, printers automated so do automated production over there and oh, okay. and yeah. uh, so fly out at some point, uh, you know, the next stuff you're you're probably almost around your you're done right yeah, after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, very nice. So it's the progress there. Um, yeah, let's continue. And um, let's see, Ruslan, do you wanna just pipe in a little bit so I see I see uh, what's happening here, Ruslan? So within FreeCAD, this is actually good. I'm glad you found, and I I suspected this this is how it's done. And you confirmed it, but but um, basically in FreeCAD, what, what I know is we do have a a generator of what is it called a what's it called? What kind of gear is this called? I don't know. It's a it's got kind of a name, but but this isn't stock in FreeCAD. You can generate that, and also allows you to generate a number of teeth and so forth. So this is awesome. That's that's the profile of. Uh, of any gear, it could be planetary gear. So you continue doing that, then you extrude it. But you can also, I believe, what they're gonna do here is when they extrude it, they don't necessarily do the 
the straight extrusion extrusion of the loft, right? So um, they're using the part design workbench, and I believe what they're doing here is doing the loft feature so that you basically have profile, and then you select another profile, which is a twisted, and then it fills it, fills it in between between two. So there you go. This is a, a beautiful um, planetary gear. And you mentioned, Rusan, that if you put two of these together, that makes a herringbone gear. Very good. Yes. That is what, what you want it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so this is perfect. So, so we're, we're now capable of doing this. And probably what we want to do is, um, yeah, uh, Excellent, excellent. So probably a stem can will we'll play around this, with this, but these things can be very small or they can be large. Uh, I've seen people use planetary gears for skateboards and they actually last and, and can take the use if you print them way larger and put a shaft through that. That's effectively like a wheel built-in uh, bearing. So, you, so imagine printing this out of uh, plastic for a lot, you know, for like a small robotic thing, or even much larger, you can print large things. Uh, they'll be essentially like, you can think about rubber tracked things, if you have um, a structure like this for, for building wheels. Uh, we can play around with lips of what can be practical, but definitely you can get small wheels and possibly larger ones if you have the, the plastic to print with. But like, like they make rubber tracks, uh, there's different ways to go about that, but yeah, that's very useful for gear downs, such as very small uh, planetary gear for like a M70 motor, for an application like an extruder, or stacking those one after another, making them much larger for pretty heavy torque. So, good stuff. Anything to add to that, Ruslan? No, no I have to that I don't need to program this. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there are some more people who already solved this problem. That's good. And uh, with traditions, uh, I will not do anything yes. else. I try to reproduce uh, just to follow the instruction from, from this video and, and, and it worked. Yeah. I don't know how, if it's possible to forget print or this uh, or the combined two gears to get the devotees to do the new launches. Yeah. You, you, you can try. For yeah, the people print them. Some people print them in individual parts. But for some, if you do the herring bone, sometimes it may be impossible to put them together. So you have to print them as one piece with a tiny space. And that's what people have done too. So you can print these as multiple gears in one piece. So you get the whole planetary thing with the sun and the planets as one piece. And they're loose bit. Yeah. Which would be a good test for what we can do. Um, so this is good. You've got the capacity to make the individual gears. And then you have to understand the map. Like what's the relationship between the inner and out gears? So how to size those? So that's the part that... that uh, would be useful. I mean, I, 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 we're, we're, we're fine with that woods for now, as long as we can generate these, but the next step above this planetary gear generator, this is just a, just a gear generator, but planetary means that you're actually generating them in a particular pattern. So that's where there's a little bit of mathematical relationships and stuff like that. I know there's some that, that exist in, um, um, in OpenSAD, but I haven't seen herring bones, ones that have herring bones. I've seen one that aren't herring bones, but um, yeah. I remember uh, on a conference, I think there were some guys from Fort Martin, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, tried to find out uh, some kind of uh, some arrangement of gears for for cars. Yeah. Uh, and it is an optimis mathematical optimization problem. Yeah. Because there, there are multiple possibilities how you, you can combine let's say seven and eight gears with three axes to have um, to make all their um, all the gears 
uh, very compact or if there are some other constraints. Yeah. But I think for, for us, it, uh, it's important just to print one. Yeah. Yes, to, to test what can go wrong. Because uh, I, we, we, uh, before we would try to create something complex, we need to try uh, oh, yeah. two, two of them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The then, thing about FreeCAD is um, so you can generate one simple slanted planetary gear, like, like here, and then simply take another one that's that's slanted in the other direction and uh -huh. join those together. That would be our herringbone gear. So yeah, we can build on the complexity from there. So yeah, that's the thing to explain that. I think you don't even need to, to use another direction, just rotate one. And then you automatically get that direction. Um, sounds like it, you would have to flip it 180, right? Yeah, I think that would work. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it. Uh, if you flip it 180... I'm not sure I can't picture it in my mind, but, but there is some mirror image stuff that you can do. I'm not sure if this is if that would say, but, but I think there is. There's a mirror image flip function in FreeCAD too, so which is not the same as rotating by 180 degrees. I think yeah, we can we can definitely do this. Yeah, one it's, not, it's not the same. You're correct. It's not the same. Yeah, that's good. Good, good. So yeah, we can play with that and explore that. Um, okay, thank you. Um, sure. Okay, do we have Abe on the team here? Abe, do you have any updates? Hey, any updates here? We can't hear you if you're trying to speak. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds like everybody. So. I'm working really busy. I'm getting an announcement up, so I gotta get going. I'm not to stay too long today. But otherwise, um, Abe, let's see, Abe, do you. Abe's cutting in and out. And Abe, you're muted if you're trying to speak, but it sounds like you have some connection issues. So, anyway, look forward to the big uh, STEM camp. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a different way that we do it this time around as opposed to before. We were, it was more scripted before, and right now we have much more flexibility in terms of the outcomes and what people really want to do. So I like that. It takes definitely takes pressure off, and, and we might be surprised in the ideal case. So there's some cool people that come in. We teach them just enough to, to make them... Um, really productive. So, so ideally, we would have some awesome results and maybe some things never expected. So, I think that's that's a real plus, and I think probably will provide a good experience for the people um, while managing expectations. What to expect is really like saying, "People, here's here's the all the resources. You go and go wild on what we can, of course, with some constraints. As in, it's got to be doable with the techniques that we have available, with, of which there are plenty. So." Uh, otherwise, it's, it's a good deal. Okay, so thanks a lot, everybody. We'll uh, meet again next week, uh, next Tuesday, same time. So we'll talk to you then. Thank you.